Okay, so I'm sorry I've been gone for a while. Uh, I've been nothing really much has been going on, you know, index wise. So I just kind of took a little break, I guess is what you could say, because I start my college next week. But uh, before, well, actually, whatever. But <laughs> I don't know what I was gonna say. But uh, before I start college, and I'll still keep my videos, you know, consistent even when I'm doing college, like two a week or something like that. But I kind of decided to do this little series or whatever where I'm going to talk about the main characters, you know, what their character development's been like and what their, when I think of them personally, and, you know, just kind of talk about them when I think what, how they're going to end up in the end, maybe. So, yeah, I'm going to talk about Toma, Accelerator, Misaka, Hamazur, and Index, which those five are the main characters of the series, if you didn't know that. But yeah, I'm saving the worst for last, which is Hamazura and Freakin' Index. So, yeah, so I'm so out with Toma, first off, and uh, I guess I might as well get to start talking about him. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so a lot of people don't know this, but in the beginning of the novels, there was like a little story about Toma. Uh, it was either that or somewhere else, I forget, but he lived in a uh, small village, you know, it wasn't big or like a city, it was a little village. Or town, I guess, I don't know, but... So, the only people that lived there were, of course, him, his mother and father, and I think his cousin. I think. But, I, know, I think she lived somewhere else, but she, like, visited and stuff. So, yeah, when he was in that town, he wasn't exactly, you know, popular, you know. He ended up causing bad luck to everyone he was around. He ended up, like, I think he got bad luck on himself, too, but... I don't remember much of it, but, um... Yeah, he got bullied a lot, which I'm guessing is which how he learned how to street fight, and then uh, he almost got stabbed, almost shot, and, you know, his father ended up sending him to Academy City, which is where Alistair kind of did his thing to where it would only, it affected him when he entered, like, oh, it didn't, his bad look didn't, like, spread it, it just focused on him. So, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering about that, honestly, I want to know why, but... Yeah, that was pretty much the story how Toma got in Academy City, you know, it was... Uh, I could go into more detail, but I don't remember most of it. And they, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they did, like, maybe, like, a full arc off that was focused on it. That'd be kind of cool. So, yeah. So, and yeah, and how he got his haircut is he actually looked in a magazine, and he saw the haircut. I'm like, oh, that's a cool haircut, and he just gets his haircut. <laughs> but I thought that was kind of funny, actually. But, yeah. The character of Toma Kamijo. Okay. Now, when development... Wise, he doesn't really get any development for pretty much... Uh, Long course of the story, you know, it doesn't get any in the index arc, not only a lot in the blood, arc, blood, uh, deep blood arc, you know, all the arcs don't necessarily get development. You, you kind of hear the same thing, but not really, I guess. But, you know, I mean, to me, I guess some development he kind of gets, not really, is in the deep blood arc where, you know, his dragon appears and he's just kind of all worried and stuff, <laughs> or whatever. Maybe when he loses his memory, that's kind of counts as development, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really think so, but those two things in the series, I like to think, are kind of like, it affects his character, but, you know, the sister arc didn't really affect them as a character, not that much. But, uh, yeah, you pretty much hear the same thing, you know, I'm gonna save you, and heroic actions and stuff. Now, to me, his development kind of starts with Aqua, when uh, he fights Aqua at the back. And when he gets defeated, I don't have the picture, I couldn't find that freaking picture anywhere, and he's looking at the his hands, so he's not the same with a picture of Aqua, but, yeah, who, yeah, I'm sure he has the same with a picture of Aqua, yeah, stare at his epicness as I talk, um, <laughs> but, yeah, you can see him kind of staring at his hand and then next at his side, and I forget what specifically he was thinking about, which I would probably remember if they, part one still existed, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know how that went, um, he's thinking how, you know, I'm not that strong, how can I protect people if I don't have enough strength, or all this stuff, I'm guessing, I'm, like I said, I'm not sure, I haven't really read them part one in a while, let alone I can't, but you know, whatever, but, but I mean, it's like, a lot of people would think that, uh, his character, if I want, he, he, he uh, got cared about Misika, but I guess she, she, you know, I'm not gonna talk about Misika in this, Toma, Toma's the main focus in this, but, I mean, it's like, he ends up getting himself out of bed, and, you know, he just 
gets gleans on his whatever those heart monitors are. I think it was leaning on a heart monitor or something, but I, I think my brain was just picturing him leaning on a heart monitor while walking over to Aqua. But I don't know. But he ends up walking the attack that Aqua was doing and messing him up, and then they add this the Amakusa Christian that had a blandic saint killer technique. But I mean, what's funny with Thomas' character is around the fact that he doesn't. He affect he gives characters development, but he kind of stays the same. But I like to think Aqua of the back arc is kind of, is kind of the beginning of his character development since he loses, and you know he kind of goes to this whole thing like I'm not strong enough and all that, I'm not capable and all that stuff. Uh, in which we kind of you know proceed to pass the other arcs where he fights Yama, where he fights you know Terror, Terror of the Left too. I don't really count that as development either. It's more development for. It's more of the development for us fans on thinking of what his power is, but again, the him funny accelerator I'd say isn't really necessarily development either. It's more development for accelerator, but yeah, I guess that makes him think. I guess I guess you could say that. But now with the whole thing with Fiamma when he fights him and they stick in the Atlantic Ocean or wherever they were. You know, I guess that's kind of development, too, because he's kind of sinking, and he thinks about all he's went through, and he's thinking, you know, I'm sorry, and all this stuff, and he then, you know, the light shines from his arm and saves him, and which, uh, kind of waters up on shore, I guess, and walks to Academy City, I'm guessing. I want to see how that went down. Like, did he just wash up on shore? He said he was, on, like, he said he, like, found himself on something. I, forget, I think he was on land or whatever, but whatever, <laughs> But again, like I said, it kind of goes more into the New Testament, and then when it hits Agitate Haliation, I kind of feel like that really is kind of character development in that arc. Because he kind of thinks to himself that if I can't just help people randomly, you know, I, I, some of these people may use me, you know? That, that's kind of the first thing that development he gets, where it's like, I can't just help everybody. I can't just help all these people because some of them may use me for their deeds. And that's not right, but you would think he would get that <laughs> from the beginning, but, you know, whatever, but, yeah, which is kind of the whole thing between him and Thor when they fight, it's more focused on, like, Thor's like, oh, you, you'll abandon this possibly hopeless girl to, to be selfish or whatever, I don't know, I didn't really get that <laughs> much, really, it was just kind of weird how that kind of went down, where they had kind of like a brawl at McDonald's and all that. But, you know, I mean, I, I guess Thomas still kind of feels like that. He can't just help everybody, you know? Which, again, is kind of development for him. But I think in, like, when he ends up kind of fighting Birdway, kind of learning to this, then, like, oh, Birdway was using him, like, nicely, I guess you could put it, like, for good intentions. And Thomas was like, all right, I'll forgive you this one time. Friendship. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I guess that still kind of affects him as a character where it's like, oh, I can't just help everybody. I mean, I think that kind of sticks with him, I think. And then, of course, he gets major development in uh, the Althinius arc when he fights Althinius, in which he kind of goes through this whole ordeal where, you know, he... I'll put this... Where he can't really... He... I can't... I don't know how to put it. Like, I, I'm trying to think of how to put this, but I... Okay, so that whole part of the Althinius arc, the Toma, basically, was to basically try to get him to admit that he's not a hero, or something, like, he's not a good guy, you know, because Althea showed him, here's this future where everyone's dead because of you, here's this future where you don't exist, and you're just nothing, and which it kind of leads Toma to be super depressed and almost killing himself, which leads to a musical moment that I'm going to mention on my musical part, um, and later on in the series I'm doing this, uh, which, I feel like the Athenian Stark truly is kind of testing his resolve. Like, it's testing how, what he thinks of everyone, what he really means to the world, I guess. But he knows he doesn't mean that much. But, you know, what do you see in the uh, Toma vs. the War Valky when he fights uh, Misaka? I'm, yeah, when he fights Misaka, this is kind of, this is development for him. But, when he fights Misaka, it's kind of where it's like, hey, I'm, you know, I am have to save this world, and I have to save this one, too. And all that stuff. I wish I could save the other one, but I couldn't. Could, but this is a real world. Well, music could kind of shows him that hey, you know, this you can't save that world. This is this this is your world. That world, as far as you know, doesn't exist. It's just something Opinius created. Even though she didn't really get the whole plot scope, she was kind of on the bat when she kept saying he was selfish and stuff. But yeah, which kind of makes Tori realize, you know, this is my world. I have to protect it and all that stuff. And which I guess the Opinius arc in the um um. 
Tomo vs. the World arc was kind of major development for him in some ways, which he has developed, you know, he has, he isn't as, I'd say, maybe help, helping everyone the type now. He, he asks questions, he, he's more cautious, he's, I would say he's a lot more strategic now, like in his battles, he's not just so head front. But yeah, and then we cut to now, which is the whole, he didn't have much, much development in the Sage Romain arc, not much in, Shokoho arc, not really, but, you know, and the Kamisada arc, I'm guessing what Kimichi's trying to do is he's trying to give Toma a roadblock to what he's doing. Like, he's trying to give Toma, like, the, like, he's trying to give Toma, like, give him development in how I'm fighting a person that is like me. Like, give me, look, make him look in a mirror, basically. He's trying to get him... To where, you know, oh, this is this what I am. It's, if I am keep doing this, I'll do something. I don't know. Maybe it's something like that. But personally, I feel like what Kimichi really is, I, I hope where he goes, is that he really makes Toma just kind of realize, hey, I can't save everybody. You know, I have to get my head out of the clouds and try to save them. But even though I know that I have to sacrifice this person or I can't save this person. Because so far, he hasn't really gone that stretch yet. He knows that he can't just, you know, help everybody, but he know, he has to know that you've, in the comedy style arc, he was kind of acting all like, you know, I will save her, I will do this, I will do that, I hope Kimichi really does make it to where Toma kind of realizes, oh, hey, I can't save everybody, you know, I can try, but I can't save everybody. That's why I think Othinius is really going to die in this arc at some point, maybe even in Dex, you know, because it... Because the winner really has said, you know, hey, if you kill Othinius, then Toma's going to lose it and all this stuff. That's where I feel like this is going. I feel like Othinius is going to die, and then Toma's just going to be all tragic, and whoever killed her, he's just going to go, like, ape on, you know, with dragon rage. I don't know, but he'll become Demon King Toma. <laughs> That's basically what I'll become, and a lot of people will stop him, and maybe... I'm hoping that'll happen. Personally, that's just my inner world right there talking, but... Yeah, I mean, I feel like he does go that direction. Because, I mean, who else thinks Othinus is gonna die? I think she's gonna die, personally. You know? I mean, who thinks Zemex is gonna die? I think she's gonna die. Those two characters are... I feel like mostly Othinus, but I feel like those two characters are most likely to die. Because, you know, it makes sense for Index to die, you know, saving... Sacrificing herself for something, you know, for the world, and maybe Othinius blocks a shot to save Toma or revives him while dying, and it would be more tragic if she died, and Toma, like, holds her in her arm, his arms, and he's all like, Rah! you know, going dragon force, but, but yeah, I hope that's the, that's the direction Toma goes. Now, personally, I like Toma, you know, I mean, he, his, he, he, okay, like, unlike Naruto or Ichigo, you know, he kind of gets a more familiarity, I guess. To where it's like, he does, he can dodge supersonic attacks, block lightning, and all this crap. And he, he doesn't have any superhuman abilities, he just has his arm, in which the whole time he's been fighting, he's been developing this precognition, you know, that blocks stuff, where it's like... With people like Naruto or Ichigo or Luffy, you know, we expect them to do this. With Toma, he's kind of like a breath of fresh air when it comes to this type of stuff, you know? We don't expect him to do all this stuff because he's a human like us. He just has an arm that can block crap. And, you know, I mean, it kind of shows us how, kind of how far a human can go because he's adapting to this crap. You know, he, he fought so many times in the six months. Yeah, can you still believe this? all this is taking place in like six months? I know, right? But... Yeah, he can just adapt to this and think faster and all this crap, and it's just, I feel like Toma's like a breath of fresh air when it comes to just main protagonists, I really do. Because it's like, when we see Ichigo pull off this supersonic speed thing, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool, but we expect him to do that. When Toma does it, we're like, oh, crap, you know? It's like, I, I really do feel like Toma's character is really cool. And interesting, I'm interested to see what... Toma's gonna go, what that Kimichi's gonna do with him, and I really hope it's what I hope, what I say it is, because I just want that to happen. That's just me. What, what are your thoughts? What do you think's gonna happen to Toma in the future? What do you like him? Do you like him? Do you hate him? So yeah, I'll see you guys on my next video. Catch you later.